thank you so much for, for having us here. Um, very excited to be here with, today with our distinguished guests. Um, the title of this panel is uh, Investment Changes or Changes in Investment Strategy for LPs. Um, and today we actually have three guests who are you know, quite distinguished in their own fields. Um, but also most interestingly, uh, they are very different in background. Uh, so to my left here, we have Mr. Gilbert Lee, um, who is head of strategy and planning, as well as uh, chief of staff, the CEO of Hang Sang Bank. Um, obviously one of the most well-known uh, commercial banks in, in Hong Kong and GBA. Very happy to have you here today. Um, Winnie, uh, Winnie Chu, she is, uh, you know, she obviously manages her own family's office um, and also runs uh, her family business, which is Dorset Hospitality. Um, and Philip Wei, uh, who's a founder of Infin Capital, um, a multifamily office um, that has pooled uh, quite a few uh, family offices together um, and is becoming more uh, uh, institutional as they grow. And so, you know, each of these uh, investors today, uh, very happy uh, to have and very lucky. And, you know, I, I think for full disclosure, uh, a couple of these are my uh, existing fund LPs and one of them hopefully will be an incoming one soon. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I'll, I'll be more careful in, in the way that I word some of these questions. So, you know, make sure we get a fair, fair answer. Um, but maybe, maybe just to kick us off, uh, could you guys just quickly give us an introduction of maybe yourself, uh, your business, and, you know, some of the uh, areas of interest um, for you? Maybe we'll start off with Gilbert. Sure. Thanks, uh, Chibo. Very happy to be here uh, sharing our experience in, in Hang Seng Bank. So I, I'm Gilbert. I run the strategy M&A and uh, CEO office for uh, Hang Seng Bank. Um, there are a few key areas we are looking at in Hang Seng Bank in the context of um, VC investment. I, I think we, um, we really uh, is a uh, traditional commercial bank uh, with 90 years of history. Uh, and we want to bring the best of our services to our customers, both uh, personal customers and corporate customers uh, in Hong Kong as well as uh, in the Greater Bay Area. So what we are looking at uh, when we are looking at new opportunities are, number one, uh, how we can uh, connect better with the Greater Bay Area, which is now a much bigger market than our home market in Hong Kong. Uh, and number two, what are the... Um, innovative ideas that are generated from the region and that can we can leverage to grow our business and help us reach out to more uh, of the customers that we want to help and serve. Um, so, so those are some of the key priorities we are looking at in the context of uh, venture investing. Uh, but we can talk more about how uh, we work with some of these companies and how we work with Chibo and, and, and Gobi. Uh, but those are some of the priorities. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Thanks, Chibo, for inviting on the panel. Um, so I'm Winnie Chu. I'm Executive Director of FICE Consortium. Uh, predominantly, we are a real estate company, um, a global real estate company. We have offices in the UK, Australia, Southeast Asia, Hong Kong, and China. Um, really very much um, worrying, apart from I I'm predominantly involved and uh, in the growing our hospitality uh, sex sector. So from about 10 years ago, we have 11 hotels in six cities. At the moment, we have 64 hotels in 26 cities. Um, so very much that's, that's kind of the consistent part um, with investment too, is that we do have a growth mindset. Um, I also had our family office, uh, so hence um, the investment into Chibo and um, yeah, and in, in other asset classes, yeah, thank you. Hi, uh, this is Philip. Um, I'm the founding partner of Infin Capital. So um, we are a multifamily office, or nowadays we call also ourselves a digital family office uh, um, for uh, high wealth individuals. Uh, now we mainly backed it by several uh, Asian tech entrepreneurs. Um, so. In, in this part, uh, we we building um, <coughs> portfolios, uh, mainly alternative investments uh, for our clients. Um, uh, uh, the investment is uh, is now uh, 
mainly focus on private equity, venture capital, private credit at the moment. Uh, and regional coverage is uh, Asia, uh, Europe, and uh, US. So uh, on the other side, uh, we are building some fund of funds. Uh, so as we came across a lot of emerging managers and, and some emerging uh, topics like Web3 and AI, so we, um, to, to enable our client to have a balanced access and, and a balanced portfolio of these uh, uh, emerging opportunities, uh, we're building now um, uh, fund of funds to cover cover this as well. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. So, so maybe along those lines, Philip, could you tell us a little bit about um, your investment strategy here in here in Asia? How you think about you know your 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 diversification across the regions or, or different asset classes? Um, first, in terms of uh, asset classes. We think here in Asia, is, uh, we st mainly still invest in, in VCs, right? It's a, it's a fast-growing, uh, emerging uh, region. Um, but on the other side, given the diversity, so we, we try to build a portfolio to invest uh, the GPs who mainly focusing on their, their own countries. So uh, as, as everybody also know, Asia is, uh, yeah, I mean, for example, we, we're building a portfolio for Southeast Asia, right? So, and, and Southeast Asia is, uh, you have the emergent uh, uh, Southeast Asia and also even frontier Southeast Asia, right? So, and, and it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's from, uh, it's actually thousands of the islands, right? So in Southeast Asia. So each country speak different language, uh, have uh, different religious beliefs, um, and mentalities, so therefore, um, for for each country, so we try to select some emerging managers. And uh, now nowadays, I would say either spin off from some of the U.S., uh, Japanese, or even Chinese uh, VCs, or they're serial entrepreneurs or senior executives from from large uh, corporations, tech corporations like Grab, C, etc. So. Uh, these are, the, I would say, the, they are driving the next uh, growth uh, for, for Southeast Asia VCs. Yeah. No, no, thank you for spending uh, you know, some time talking about Southeast Asia. Um, obviously, we are sitting here in Macau, which is part of the Greater Bay Area. Um, I do want to talk more about the Greater Bay Area, but perhaps that will be a question for you know, the entire panel uh, later on. Um, maybe just very quickly, because I know that your multifamily office, it originally started with a few... Um, you know, tech entrepreneurs, right? Um, and so they grew their businesses very successfully, they listed and eventually cashed out. Um, maybe from a, you know, from that perspective, could you give us a little bit more color on, you know, the, maybe the differences uh, in terms of investment mindset that tech entrepreneurs and their family offices might have versus more traditional, uh, you know, family offices, you know, that uh, made their money in, let's say, real estate or, or manufacturing, not to put you on the spot, Winnie. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think there there are definitely uh, some some large uh, differences. I mean, um, uh, between the entrepreneurs, especially like I mean, first ge generation entrepreneurs and second generations, right? So first generations they start from scratch and uh, uh, their their own business traditionally also been growing very fast speed, uh, like a yeah double digit. Um, given uh, China also have like a lot of opportunities, right? So therefore their, 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 um, their um, expectation of returns is often also higher, right? Um, on the other side, they, they still mix with their personal investment with their own kind of businesses. Therefore they, they wanna using investment as a kind of uh, uh, exploring their new ideas, right? So, and, and to, to help their, their business to, to also maybe looking at some, some potential new areas or expanding to some new regions. Uh, so, and they, they I mean, they, uh, they, they've been successful with their own business and they, they, they still also quite believe that they can uh, build their, their own teams um, and they tend to invest directly instead of funds. Therefore, uh, our approach is, um, uh, first of all, we think uh, we, we need to be humble, humble enough, 
if we enter to a new country and uh, looking at some some new new areas. Therefore, we we build a portfolio of VCs, and VCs is um, um, typically these emerging VCs were were share the deal flows with us, and then we would do some core investment in a typically I would say like a growth stage a Series B when the company already yeah, build their, their products and looking for expansions. Uh, and, and then that we can create some strategic value added to them. So that also at the same time, back to your question, fulfill the, the, the mandate of our clients to do some more uh, direct investment. Yeah. Got it, thank you. And um, I guess for, for Winnie, uh, since you do manage your own you know, family office for, for many years, um, and you know a lot of that was built from the real estate side and uh, hospitality. Maybe you could just share a little bit about you know your journey um, in that family office uh, investments and how that's changed over time. Sure. I think let me start by you know m mostly focusing on the family office side. Um, typically, um, I think with most family offices, uh, very much what you said is correct in terms of the entrepreneur and second, third generation. In terms of asset class. Typically, I mean, prior to COVID, um, a lot of us really look at, I mean, for our family office, it's really about 80, in terms of asset allocation, probably 80% in secondary and 20% in, in the primary market. But again, as we were discussing earlier, I mean, in the last two years, you know, there's no longer kind of what's less risky or not. If you look at um, what has happened in the maybe Asian high yield bond in the 2022, I mean, it's, it's not just that if you hold it in 2022, you're about 40 to 80 percent down, but I mean, the liquidity is also questionable. So, so hence, you know, we're now looking at more kind of holistic about the investment um, in terms, uh, you know, in, uh, so we're not really looking at allocation primary, secondary, but ma mainly really absolute return the horizon of it. And this, this is kind of what we're thinking. And in terms of, um, kind of sectors, um, very much, of course, uh, when we come to kind of fund of funds and when we are invested with you from our working experience, we're definitely more involved with kind of prop tech, uh, things that is more relevant, of course, to us. But the good news about real estate and property is very much into day-to-day -day life. Um, so, so we've been able to, to use this strategy and uh, with the help of our global offices, because our offices in in uh, Malaysia, Singapore, Australia, Japan, as well as UK, has really been around for 20, 30 years. So, so I think that really helps as well to, to develop and, and grow some of our, I think we have a few companies that, that we work together with and actually really we get so involved also in the co-investment and how to grow the company together, so, so there. Yeah, um, I, I think in there you, you mentioned something that you know, really caught my interest around the perception of risk changing. Right, because I guess in the past, you know, we've always, you know, venture has always been in a bucket of alternatives, which in general just has been viewed as much more risky um, in terms as as an asset class. Um, and obviously, over the last few years, um, whether it's you know different assets like like bonds or you know things like that, or um, you know going from later stage to earlier stage um, pre-IPO deals versus you know seed and Series A, um, you know the perception of that risk is changing. Right, and so you know, maybe you could speak a little bit about that, um, and you know, if possible, maybe share how your portfolio today kind of w would be allocated, um, roughly. So, as I mentioned earlier, no, we no longer kind of look at the the allocation. We really look at the horizon, horizon, and the liquidity. So these two are mainly what what we're looking at, and again. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we definitely like to do more. Again, we're quite selective, <laughs> Chivo. It's not just because you're here. I, I'm saying this. We really have, in terms of fun, we really work with um, uh, around five, uh, and we try. It's a very good working relationship. We have a very good trust, uh, and likewise, there are some deals that maybe we will have the exposure to because we have the global the network. Uh, and a lot of times, Chivo, you will get a call from me and ask, "Hey, what do you think of this company?" And vice versa. So, I, I really value the, the this kind of working relationship. And of course, I think going forward, the weightage will change if you really look at the. Uh, the allocation, it will definitely be more pri primary market. And, and I, I just feel that 
especially in our generation, you want to make a difference. And, and actually being able to, I'm also, um, I also chair a philanthropy uh, side. And it's very, actually I really feel there's some similarity with philanthropy and, and VC, especially on the education side, because it's really opening, I always joke to my friends, I like, I used to work a lot with our scholars, um, but I now like to work with the founders more because it's it's actually, in a way, shorter. They know exactly, hey, Winnie, can you introduce this person to me? So I know exactly what door to open for them. So, But I mean, again, it's I think it's a whole ecosystem, and, and that's really what we look at when we invest here. Thank you so much. Um, Gilbert, I, I know that um, in terms of risk, uh, commercial banks have always been, you know, much more on the on the conservative side. Um, and, I, and I know that for Hang Seng, it's actually a very rare occurrence that, you know, you guys would actually consider uh, looking at, you know, a VC type deal or, you know, working with a, a VC fund, right, as, as an investor. And so maybe, maybe you could speak a little bit about how you view that and, you know, what's changed over the last few years that would make you guys more open to it? Yeah, thank, thanks, Shibo. I, I, indeed, uh, it, it takes two to tango, and and I think and uh, there are there are two um, two types of readiness uh, when an institution like Hang Seng Bank with 19 years of history uh, think about uh, going ahead and do a venture investment. The first readiness is internal readiness. So it, it, during our 19 years of history. We, we find that when we want to bring the best of our services to our customer, uh, the, the requirement changes. And there are two areas. First is the depth. The, our customer demand better and better service and more and more uh, advanced way of delivering our service through, for example, digital, through uh, different new technologies. Um, so we, we, we internally, we have the, uh, we find out the need to change. So that, that's uh, number one. But number two is you really need a, uh, a leader in our CEO to see that there are necessary to look outside uh, for new ideas who, which can complement uh, what we are doing internally in serving our customer. So internally, uh, our organization, uh, through the leadership of our CEO, uh, create a team of uh, experts who understand our business well internally and who can uh, bring these uh, areas of interest to the market and talk to um, great partners like yourself, uh, Chipo, and to some of the potential por portfolio companies. So we need to be ready internally, that's number one. Number two is of course external readiness. When we see a uh, like-minded partner like uh, in, in, in Gobi, for example. Uh, we, we want to partner with someone who are very open in collaboration with a LP like ourselves, uh, both through the collaboration with, a, with the GP as well as the portfolio companies. So that, that's number one. And uh, what's more is when we work with a, a great partner like yourself, you, we do not only focus in growing the portfolio companies, but also, like Winnie said, growing the ecosystem, which is of critical importance. Um, the, the whole entrepreneurial spirit needs to be uh, nurtured. And we together, with a venture capital, with a commercial bank, and with a lot of the uh, great investors like family offices, we can create that ecosystem together, and we did that, and we are continu continuing to do that. I think those are the two readiness that needs to be in place for for ourselves, for Hang Seng to to find a great partner to to do good for the whole ecosystem. So the two readinesses that I I mentioned. Yeah, yeah no, and and Winnie also mentioned some, you know, that the, this term of ecosystem, right? And you know, definitely in in my day to day. Uh, the, the, the idea of a startup ecosystem, of an investor ecosystem, and an innovation ecosystem as a whole, um, you know, that, that's become even more relevant. Um, maybe, maybe, Gilbert, you could also, you know, do, uh, give us a few examples of the different ways that you've worked with, you know, potentially uh, invest, uh, startups or, you know, portfolio companies. Yeah, I, I think when, when we, uh, Hang Seng Bank, uh, look at 
partnership and working with the portfolio companies, we really uh, want to have a, a full dimension relationship with them. So that I, I can call a few examples which represent different dimensions that we can uh, grow together with the portfolio companies. I think uh, one typical way for us is to create new business model together with some of these portfolio companies. And in that process, help them grow as well as helping Hang Seng Bank grow. Uh, one example is we work with a uh, portfolio company in specializing in developing uh, personalized coding and technology courses, uh, which is called Preface Coding, by the way. And when we work with them, they are doing really meaningful business who help small companies to develop technology capability, to develop coding, programming capability. And we think a lot of our customer, Hang Seng Bank's SME customer, uh, we serve over, uh, we, we serve close to 100,000 of these small, medium-sized customers in Hong Kong. And we want to help our customer, SME customer too. So we, we develop a financing product with Preface Holding together. And when some of these uh, SME companies who want to take lessons and classes from Preface Coding. We, we do the fi bridging finance, very tiny amount, but it's really important for these SMEs. So they can, the SMEs can then enjoy the learning experience without worrying about, oh, I do not have the cash flow right now. Oh, I do not have uh, uh, enough financing right now. So we do the bridging for them. So we help the companies, the, the SME companies grow, we help Preface Coding grow, and we help ourselves grow. So that's one example. Another example is re-adopting a solution from uh, a portfolio company. And that particular solution is now part of our bread and butter business in uh, call center, in customer services. Uh, that particular example is called Fano Lab, who develop uh, speech recognition and uh, natural language processing technologies. And we do a lot of uh, POC uh, exercise with them, test uh, what our uh, retail customer wants, how they interact with our call centers, and therefore how we can use speech technology to uh, enhance our services. So now we become one of the first batch of customers who use um, FanoLab services, and we are continuing the relationship uh, very well. And and finally, during it, especially during the pandemics, uh, we use we need to. Uh, ensure our customer have a uh, safe and, and clean environment in our uh, branches, for example. So we uh, adopt one of the uh, products from, uh, from one of the portfolio companies. Uh, the company is called Rice Robotics. So we adopt their robotic solution in sanitizing uh, all our offices and branches. And again, we become one of the uh, earlier uh, customers of Rice Robotics, making sure we are uh, making sure th we 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 uh, we adopt the solution as well as helping them grow from a uh, banking and finance perspective. So some of the some of few examples that we we work with these portfolio yeah. companies. If I may, I mean Gilbert, um, talking about developing the ecosystem, you really highlighted a lot um, during the portfolio stage. But if I may actually take it a little bit earlier. Um, really in terms of the education part and how to link the ecosystem. Again, I do value our partnership with Gobi um, because it's at the, I mean, uh, my passion is actually youth as well as education. Um, so uh, in last, during COVID, we've actually built a co-creation lab, just you giving example, within VTC, which is a vocational training school in Hong Kong. And the average income uh, for both parents combined is 20,000 Hong Kong dollars. Um, so we value partners like Gobi because it's kind of a co-creation center incubation lab. And um, apart from you know, having AI equipments in there, really teaching um, these younger uh, company how to pitch and providing services within our company, work legal advice, actually we should talk more on the banking, even opening bank accounts and Definitely. all that. Um, <laughs> Uh, what we find is that 
It's just giving them confidence. In fact, I think one of your, some of your colleagues sat on our judge panel because every year we run a program and choose the, the top few companies. And, and two, we've been running this program for three years now. And I'm proud to say two of our companies actually got three, four million funding from our government and now move on to science part. So these, I think, is really to also to create the next generation. And, and it's most touching to, to be able to, to see that and, and just giving hope. And I also want to say, apart from, of course, raising fun and all that, it's giving the opportunity to kind of younger uh, uh, students to be able to see, oh, how this can relate to us. And another example I'd like to also highlight, of course, is um, I sit on the board of Hong Kong University, and Chibo also work, uh, Gobi also work very closely with a lot of our um, development. <laughs> and um, again, I will, not, I will not disclose the name of the one that with latest investment, but a lot of technology does come from universities and, and, and kind of the innovation within universities. Yeah. No, no, thank, thank you so much for, for sharing your experiences working with these portfolio companies and all the kind words that you guys have for uh, myself and Gobi. I mean, I did not pay these two. Uh, this is totally of their own accord. Um, I, I, I do want to ask on that note just to fill up because I know that you work with a lot of you know, GPs on your own and you know, you've invested in many funds. Um, has your relationship changed as an LP uh, with GPs over time? Like, you know, what, what is it like today? Um, you know, is it, is it a good one? <laughs> yeah, definitely, yeah. So, um, um, for, first, maybe uh, some, some, some uh, echo to, to what Geobold uh, and uh, when you said, I, because I have also a corporate life, a uh, corporate career before I was uh, at Folsom, head of the global banking and fintech investment. So, I pretty uh, understood the processes and the synergies, uh, CVC and also corporate uh, investment in, in VCs. On the other side, so as I now deal a lot of with uh, individuals, uh, uh, I'm, I'm helping them to 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 first um, uh, to uh, to fulfill their their mandate. Uh, often is uh, it's a kind of uh, 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 kind of build their legacy, uh, legacy for for the next generation. Um, but on the other side, they're, they're typically also in our age, like uh, mid forty or something. Uh, they 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 still want to uh, explore some new opportunities to build their own, to expand their own businesses. Uh, so um, I think um, <coughs> the the LP relationship is. Uh, 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 is, is important, um, but also we would like to also, uh, given we are a multifamily office, we put the return uh, as a first, not sacrificing the, the independency uh, among the, all these uh, 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 clients. So on the other side, I mean, the, the GP relationship is, uh, is really also the key uh, for our investment strategy. Uh, so, uh, as I previously mentioned, we our strategy is uh, emergent managers, right? So, uh, emergent managers uh, uh, means these are the folks uh, having track records, right? And, and but then they they taking more entrepreneurial step to have their own fund, and then they're typically also more focused, right? So. Um, but uh, they have their weaknesses as well, right? So as they, uh, they may uh, change their roles from more like a, a sector focus to more generalistic and, and also managing a larger team, right? So that's, um, that's also something maybe we can, we can step in and, and, and then helping them to, to, to introduce some of the best practice of, of like a fund constructing and introducing them some, some international LPs as well. So as, uh, by the way, my background, I spent around 10 years in Europe. So I, I know some of the very mature European family office uh, pretty well as well. So um, therefore, so I mean, uh, as a return, so, they often share the, the very frontier uh, knowledge uh, of in their each, each category or each uh, country to us. 
uh, it's, it's a very uh, closer relationship, uh, and also the deal flows. As we, now for Asia, we tend to do like a 60% fund of fund investment and 40% direct. So therefore the direct part of the investment deal flows is coming from the GPs, right? So, and they often they have, a, they have the smaller fund, like a 50, 100 million, a maximum like a 300 million. Uh, so they, 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 they love also to build some vehicles, SPVs, for allow us, uh, us to, to call invest. So that's, that's maintained a, a very good relationship between GP and, and LP, yeah. No, that, that's, a, that's a lot of good, good advice and, you know, uh, as how an institutional LP might think about, you know, looking at different types of fund managers. Winnie, I, I know, you know, there, there, there may be some uh, younger kind of second gen, um, you know, professionals out there that are now stepping into the roles of, you know, managing their own family offices. Would you have any uh, advice for, for some of these guys that um, are looking at you know, investing you know, as an LP or as, you know, into the alternative space? I think um, definitely, same like investing in a company, you invest in the people. Um, again, I know you didn't pay me to say this. So. <laughs> but I think um, really in terms of investing in a fund, there's a few things to, to look at. The investment procedure for us is absolutely important. Uh, really, the kind of the value and how you choose the company. Um, uh, I think exit is someone is some some that a lot of people will forget, but uh, the track record and exiting, because again, <laughs> in the last few years, even with VC or PE, do you even wait till the IPO stage? Maybe talking about PE or actually a trade sale. I mean, within in the last few years. Um, We've had some of our portfolio company like Hong Kong Taxi. Instead of waiting for for the portfolio, you know, to for it to go to IPO, we did a trade sale to Uber. So things like that, maybe. So so I would definitely highlight. A lot of times, it's really all the the talk and the strategy, but um, also the exit is is, is as important uh, and 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 the track record in that. So yeah, that's kind of the advice I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're, we're running a little bit short on time, so I think just uh, the last round of uh, last couple of rounds of questions for for all of you, and maybe Gilbert, we'll start with you. Um, you know, how do you view the opportunity here in the Greater Bay Area? I know this is like a you know basically your home turf, and you guys have a wide range of businesses here, not just in Hong Kong, Macau, but also you know the mainland, nine cities. Um, you know, could you tell us a little bit about how you guys view the GBA, uh, and maybe also you know since we're here in Macau, just a little extra on you know, how, how, how you view Macau and, you know, this Beyond Expo. Yeah, thanks. Um, I think um, GBA definitely is a great opportunity for uh, commercial, the private sector, but as well as for uh, our social uh, interaction with, with more people and better people. Uh, but, but for Hang Seng, uh, GBA is our, is our home turf. Our, we are founded 90 years ago. Uh, by founders actually from the Guangdong province uh, moving to, to Hong Kong and, and it's in our, it's in our DNA. We are in uh, the mainland cities of, of GBA as early as the 80s uh, with our rep office in Shenzhen and branch in Guangzhou. So we have a very uh, well established presence in uh, the mainland cities of, of the Greater Bay Area. Um, I, I think for us the GBA is a great opportunity to bring the best of Hong Kong uh, to to a larger uh, population in the Greater Bay Area. So we we Hang Seng Bank is a uh, is a local is the largest local uh, bank in Hong Kong, and we are uh, good at we are proud of uh, a lot of things, including our customer services including how we build trust with our customer, including the full range of services across banking, insurance, investment, and all that. Uh, so, so we want to give these level of and quality of services and offering to a larger population as well. So, so we, want to, uh, uh, we, we want to grow our business in the Greater Bay Area. Um, to do that, I, I think, uh, there are a few areas we, we are looking into uh, to work through great partners like uh, Gobi, for example, is a good way for us to really look into new areas 
and new ecosystems. Um, we are traditionally very strong in some of the traditional segments like manufacturing, like uh, real estate and all that. But we, we need to uh, gradually look into new economies, for example, healthcare, for example, and, and, and some other great ideas. So it is good for us to um, work with partners like Gobi uh, and look into GBA with a different angle. Um, a few key areas we think it's important for uh, investing in, in the GBA from Hang Seng's perspective. We, we look for um, business models that can connect GBA uh, from within uh, the different cities in GBA and also connecting GBA to the world. So this type of business models we, we, we are very interested in. Uh, we want to have business models that can connect new economy with traditional economy. We can therefore connect ourselves with the new economy, but also connect our existing clients with, with new idea and new, uh, 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 new, new economy and new opportunities. And, and finally, which is also very important uh, for both the livelihood of people as well as aligning with, uh, with China's uh, central policy direction is to connect social benefit with commercial benefit. And, and that's hugely important uh, when we create a harmonious um, society in the Greater Bay Area. We want commercial and private sectors to play a role as well. So that is also a key area that we look at uh, when we invest and look for opportunities in the Greater Bay Area. I think very much I agree with Gilbert. Um, the GBA area really complements each other. I, I think it's really the growth for all as well as a connection to China and also connection to the world. Um, if I give an example of uh, one, one of our portfolio company, um, it's an electronic outboard, outboard motor. These stu students actually were students at UST in Hong Kong and they fell in love with um, uh, uh, wakeboarding and, and whatnot. And then they did, then designed an out, outboard motor uh, with the electronic outboard motor. And then they have their factory in Shenzhen, office in Hong Kong. And now it's actually, and it goes global. And it's now the second, in the last five years, it now became the second biggest uh, out, uh, electronic outboard motor, co motor company. So there are really success stories and really using leveraging on the whole greater Bay Area facing China as well as facing the world. So um, uh, as I live in um, Hong Kong uh, since uh, yeah, 2018 and before that I was in Shanghai and before that I was, I was in Europe. So. Um, uh, and now we have two offices in Hong Kong and Singapore. So I, I uh, pretty see uh, a, a different dynamics in, in, in this region. I mean, um, for us, uh, Hong Kong is definitely a, a, a good uh, intersection between West and East and more, uh, yeah, more, um, uh, uh, detailed, it's uh, it's uh, as you can uh, leverage a lot of resources from uh, from Shenzhen. So it's a, a tremendous uh, good uh, kind of engineer base and, and manufacturing base. On the other side, you have also the the, the legal system. The, the I mean also the, the international minded people, right? So uh, and um, uh, uh, in in Hong Kong and uh, Macau, so I mean, so it's a uh, it's pretty uh, kind of um, uh, have the potential, yeah, to be, uh, emerge uh, and, and become right so the the next growth engine uh, for China, but also uh, as well as for Southeast Asia, as as uh, uh, Gobi uh, <laughs> kind of uh, in, innovate in the new ter terminology GBA ASEAN, right? So. Yeah, that's uh, that definitely also um, can be a good window to 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 uh, to export to expand to Southeast Asia. Yeah, no, th thank thank you all. Um, you know, I think we have just about a minute left. Um, you know, I, I won't speak at all about uh, GBA Greater Bay Area because I think everyone knows how bullish I am on the on the region. Um, I, I do just want to make a quick note that you know it's it's so exciting for all of us to be gathered here today um, in Macau 
um, you know, on at this Beyond Expo, which is, you know, I hope going to be one of the premier platforms for, you know, tech entrepreneurship investment uh, in Asia in the years to come. Um, and very much looking forward to, you know, having you guys back and, and, and seeing, uh, you know, where, where this is all going in a few years. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.